I don't want to be as obvious as at all. Um, I think it is patently obvious that we do no longer live in a society where we have to believe in the binary expectation of gender and sex. Can I get a yeah for that? Yeah. 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 Thank you. My name is Olya Svex and I also live in Swindon. Aye, aye. Yeah. Uh, so it's very good to be here. So I'm a poet. Um, Callum, do you like poetry? Yes. Oh, that's good, yeah. So um, I'm going to do some poetry for you. Jenny, what for that? Yeah. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> I also like to give people some top tips about poetry. Um, for example, poetry is good. Um, you can do it at any time, and especially it's good for events and stuff. Talking about death and that, like my grandma was really happy that I read out some poetry at my granddad's funeral. She just said it would have been good if it wasn't about Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> I had an argument with my mum today actually, so I'm going to feel a little bit down today. Um, so, you know, I pulled one out of the bag. This is always good, kind of, you know, you can use this, um, kind of, sorry, you can use this as well if you ever want to get out of something you don't want to do. I just said, well, I'm just going to go and live with my dad. Have you ever said that? Yeah, I said that. The only problem is if my dad lives with us. <laughs> um, so I did say, well, I'm going to, this one's really good. I said, well, if you don't let me have some more time on the PS3, yeah, I'm going to go and live with my uncle Colin. Colin's got previous, you know? Yeah, he reckons that that girl was like over 18, but he met her at an inter schools volleyball tournament. So everyone calls him Colin the pedo. <laughs> so he threatened to go and live with my uncle Colin. Obviously, I got an extra hour on the PS3. <laughs> my first poem for you is about metaphors and similes. I study creative writing at Bath Spa University. So this poem is about telling you about metaphors and similes. For those that are interested, a metaphor says that something is something, whereas a simile says something is like something. So a metaphor is like a simile, which is ridiculous really, because you have to say that a metaphor is like a simile, then you're actually using a simile to explain a metaphor. Surely it's better to say that a metaphor is a metaphor. <laughs> Quite, um, you know, quite hard actually. My mate's taking a piss out of me because, you know, it's a, it's a crossbreed. Um, my friend's got a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, but all I have to say to my dog is mittens, go for the throat and he will kill you. <laughs> mittens wouldn't do that because with great power comes great responsibility, you get me? <laughs> I'm going to dedicate this poem to my teacher, Lucy English. Because she also likes dogs. My dog is the devil! That was a metaphor. <laughs> she barks like a demon! That was a simile. <laughs> she likes to chase squirrels and hump the leg of my friend Stephen! Thank you. <laughs> yeah, why not just that? You know, yourself. <laughs> uh, my next poem is about drugs. And this is, this is called Drugs Are Bad, Including Legal Highs. <laughs> um, uh, at my college and stuff, you know, I am drugs ambassador, so they asked me to do this in assembly and stuff. I'm going to dedicate this poem to my teacher, Lucy English, because she also thinks that drugs are bad, and I know this because she's got really nice skin. <laughs> She but doesn't take drugs, or she's got shit hot moisturizer. <laughs> drugs are bad. And by the way, when I say bad, I don't mean bad as in they are good. <laughs> I mean bad as in they are not sick, and by not sick I don't mean they are well, I mean they are not good, you know? <laughs> they are bad in a bad way, not good in a good bad way, you get me? <laughs> it's about getting high on life, instead of drugs or legal highs. So if anybody who takes drugs, I don't. <laughs> the cry of a newborn baby. A flower in bloom. That freshly washed duvet feeling washed in non bio otherwise I come out in hives. Feeling! When my teacher, Lucy English, 
walks into a room. These are the things that get me high. With these things, you ain't gonna die. Cause drugs are bad, but not in a good bad way, but in a bad bad way. <laughs> Heroin is so not in and speed so nighty nighty. So get your frills in nature, not by talking on a jointy. Let a lovely supper be your upper. <laughs> drugs are bad, but not in a good bad way, but in a bad bad way. So walk in the garden, take the hand of a little girl, with her mom's permission, mind. <laughs> you can't just take it on the <laughs> Otherwise, all gets a bit Thompson Venable, she gave me. You will remember. So walk in the garden, take the hand of a little girl, have a cup of Roy Bosch, give a kind of orange smoothie a whirl. <laughs> Let love be your MGMA. Let a spring lamb be your crack. Get, make friendship your ketamine. Get your meow meow from a cat. <laughs> These drugs are bad, but not in a good bad way, but in a bad bad way. Don't go catatonic. Listen to the philharmonic. Stay away from the spice. Why don't you nom nom on some Mr. Ben's rice? Cause drugs are bad, and not in a good bad way, but in a bad bad way. Let a summer breeze be your ease. Have a chomp on a ripe banana, instead of getting high on marijuana. <laughs> Make a naughty squirrel running down your street. Be your oxy fat elite. <coughs> Let an open packet of old nopes in a biscuit tin. Be your dihydrocodine metafetamine. Those drugs are bad, but not in a good bad way, but in a bad bad way. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, the stuff that Leighton sells is just popping candy. Yeah, his drugs are really bad. <laughs> Seriously, rescue remedy is stronger, you know? You know, they say that he sells it, he doesn't. You know what he does? He just nicks one of his mum's calms and draws little doves on him with his little sister's like felt pens. <laughs> And his uncle ain't some gangster that like lives in Asheville prison and stuff and smuggles drugs out of prison. No, he works in Niddle. I see him, he's a cashier. And you, you won't get high from his stash either, no. Like my mate, yeah, went to buy some coke off him. It was just crushed up barocca. <laughs> you won't get high from his stash, but you will get more than your allotted amount of daily vitamin C. <laughs> so it's win win. So, so drugs are bad, yeah, but Leighton's drugs are really bad. Um, I'm going to do uh, a poem now about a serious medical issue um, and it's something that's really close to my heart um, because a lot of people are going through this and 25% of people that experience this are young men aged 16 to 26 um, and this actually happened to a friend of mine um, he went through this so this is for him, it's quite a serious one I'd like to dedicate it to my teacher. <laughs> Lucy English. Because I think she would understand too. It's called Twisted Testicle. <laughs> the Dunhill Posse rule this park. There's Martin and Mikey and Daryl and me. We do football and skateboarding. But we don't do street dance. We hang about in the park with our hands in our pants. And one sunny winter's day, Mikey dared Martin to a double dare choice time limit, no backsies. Which means you've got to do the dare, but in a lot of time period. <laughs> Mikey said Martin either had to climb the monkey bars or kiss down. The ultimate challenge to cause serious grief. Martin says he won't kiss no guy, but not because he's a queerist. No, it's because you've got Daryl, you don't clean his own teeth. <laughs> To scale the monkey bars with gusto and bravery and love and respect for the dare, but his hand slipped from the coal gun metal grey steel and he fell through the air. He landed quite heavily. His limbs was a tangled mess, but we've done worse than snowboarding. So why, why, why is Martin so distressed? And then we realise it was a twisted testicle. <laughs> it was a twisted testicle. We all should have known. We should have said no. There's Martin screaming and writhing in pain. We had to call his mum to come and have a look. Oh my days, the shame, the shame. 
It was a twisted testicle. It was a twisted testicle. His skull had swelled up to the size of a melon. He had to go to the hospital, yeah, and she, yeah, she, a female nurse, had to fondle his love spuds for truth. <laughs> Daryl took pictures and put them on Instagram. His pubeless nuggets got 70 likes, including one from his nan. <laughs> it was a twisted testicle. It was a twisted testicle. His dad was crying because he thought his son would have to be castrated, but the nurse explained his plums just needed to be rotated. We documented the fiasco minute by minute on Twitter. He still gets the odd shouts of like Oliver Twist, Twisticles, or Balloon Balls. He was like the most famous bloke in Swindon to have had his love spuds more. It was a twisted testicle. It was a twisted testicle. It all worked out okay. The nurse unfurled his acorns, and Junior I group for kept the pain and swelling at bay. We now refer to that event as Blue Monday and tell everyone that we see of Martin's catastrophe. <laughs> but let this be a lesson to all who play dare at your peril. Don't choose the monkey bars. Just snog Daryl. Thank you. <laughs>